My name is Clarice Assad. I'm a composer, arranger, performer, and my main instrument is the voice. I like to use the voice not only to sing words, you're not the kind of a boy for a girl like me, but also to create soundscapes. <laughs> My passion for the voice combined with my passion for composing and teaching culminated on a workshop called Voxploration. Spontaneous music creation and improvisation, where the participants use just the body and the voice to create music. We sing, we create loops, we improvise, we do a lot of sketch singing. This workshop can be taught in many different settings and it can be taught to anybody who is interested in music. Today I'm going to talk about two things that I do during the classes. Gestures and loops. Each individual gesture can be assigned to a specific sound and can control with movement and direction, dynamic range and articulation. Let's take a look. In the following clip, I have assigned each individual gesture to trigger a unique pre-recorded sound that I overdubbed with my voice. Let's take a look at how this is used in a classroom. Here's a class I taught back in 2016. Here I'm working with young dance students from the St. Paul Conservatory. I began applying these techniques into my symphonic and chamber music work, allowing for conductors and musicians to improvise on specific portions of the score, where they could control pitch, harmony, dynamic, rhythm, and any other musical elements using pre-assigned gestures. Usually in this type of setting, there is little to no room for improvisation. The music is all written out. The most interesting thing about these patches of improvisation is that, at least in those specific spots, the music will never sound the same every time. So I've been calling this dynamic music. In my score Ad Infinitum, a percussion concerto I wrote for Dame Evelyn Glennie, I used two instances of surprises using gestures. One by using the gestures to trigger specific sets of chords. First I gave the conductor four sets of harmonies that he could choose from and give the musicians by cueing the numbers. Many possibilities, harmonic, rhythmic, dynamic, could happen here during the introduction. And of course, any combinations of the chords would create different chords every time. The second time I used the same principle was when the percussionist played a hit and the horn section behind would follow her movement. But every time she hit the drum, they would play with her. Not all of it was together in the downbeat, but they decided to do it more times than I had suggested on the score, which I think means they probably were into it. And just like that, we were all creating music using gestures. Looping is essentially the repetition of a musical idea over and over again. Shira, 
Why not combine the loops with the gestures? That is really cool. You can get a loop going and have other musicians react to gestures. So you have two compositions happening simultaneously. possibilities to what can be done with the voice. I'll be talking about many other things here in these videos, so if you like what you hear, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.